A major concern that South Africa has been late in securing a vaccine against COVID-19 for the population. Some vaccines have already been approved and these are being rolled out in countries around the world. But no one locally has been given a jab. Well, in December, the president was talking about a vaccine being rolled out in the second quarter of this year. The health department has since said everything is being done to expedite the procurement of vaccines. Business for South Africa has been working with government and the Solidarity Fund to procure adequate COVID-19 vaccines for South Africans. Uh, to discuss tonight, we're joined by Business for South Africa Health Working Group Chair Stavros Nikolaou. Uh, Mr. Nikolaou, thank you for being with us as, as always. Have we as South Africa been uh, extremely lax in this crucial area of securing a vaccine? Francis, good evening to you and uh, all the viewers and thanks again for this opportunity. Uh, I think a starting point for me is that vaccines are the single biggest game changer in, in, the, in taming the pandemic. Um, of course, you need many other interventions, but we cannot underestimate that vaccines are the single most important tool we have at our disposal right now to fight the pandemic. And understandably, there is significant anxiety from all sectors of society, not least uh, healthcare workers who are at the front line. So Business for South Africa has also been viewing this with, uh, with uh, significant concern. And I think our position is, um, as of uh, two and a half or three weeks ago, we've, we've started engaging government on this to see where business, organized business that is, can play a role, uh, whether it's on the financing side, as you've seen, there is a, a financing structure that uh, Adrian Gore and his team have put together, but also more broadly, uh, where can business assist government in either accelerating the procurement of these? We don't want to lead this process, it's government uh, that has to do this, but certainly where we can play a role in accelerating the supply of the vaccine and also in its, in its rollout and administration, um, we, will, we will do that and we will continue having those discussions with government. OK, and we'll talk about uh, the, the plan that you've mentioned. But, I mean, if you were only in talks with government uh, from, from a few weeks back, wa wasn't that too late? Shouldn't the, the private sector have jumped in much earlier anyway? You know, I think vaccine programmes uh, are, are traditionally something that governments drive. I know we're in a completely different and extraordinary situation here uh, at the moment. And that is why um, we are prepared... Um, as a sector of society, because I don't think uh, it's only up to government to roll out uh, an, an effective, swift and efficient uh, vaccine program. It's, it's all sectors of society that need to get involved. It has to, however, be government-led. And, and business will continue to support, complement and, where possible, advise government um, in an attempt to accelerate this. There's this concern about equitable distribution. Uh, so, so the plan you're talking about is that the, the private sector will get involved. Medical aids maybe could uh, put the money up front because we, we know government has been struggling with that. Um, buying the, the vaccines and, and then in a sense the private sector will subsidise uh, vaccines for, for the poor. Just explain how that would work. So if you are a medical aid uh, client, could you then, you know, the medical aid will pay for the vaccine. Could you then uh, get the vaccine and pay the medical aid? But will it be more expensive because you are now subsidizing uh, vaccines for, for the poor? How, how does it actually work? Okay, so firstly, we need to vaccinate 35 to 40 million South Africans over a 12 month period in an effort to attain herd immunity. If we achieve herd immunity, then we can get a significant level of normality back into society and, and open up the economy fully again. Uh, so what we know right now is that we've got 6 million lives covered through COVAX. The timing of that right now is, is, is a little fluid. So we need to cover the rest of the population groups. Uh, roughly 9 million South Africans, uh, these are lives as we call them, are covered by a medical scheme, or some people call it private health insurance. So the arrangement that is being sought is that we would look to vaccinate 70% of your medical aid covered population, 
and the medical schemes would then on an, uh, on an equal basis cover a dose for another 7 million uncovered lives. That is conceptually how it works. The finer detail is being worked out at the moment, but it's not unusual to have a differentiated pricing between the private and the public sector. So all pharmaceuticals in this country are sold on that basis where you have a, 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 an element of private sector subsidy into the public sector. Yeah. It's something that is traditional and something that's worked very well for our country. All right, and, and we'll follow that. I, I mean, some would say, is, is it a bit late now to start uh, dealing with the manufacturers who, who've got orders from around the world? J just tell me in your, your view, what options are there? Um, the, the Pfizer vaccine uh, needs cold storage. Uh, that, that didn't sound suitable. Uh, the Oxford vaccine apparently already out of stock. And, and then you as an Aspen exec um, told us earlier about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which if approved uh, will be actually actually manufactured here, could, could that be a game changer? Just, just tell us how you see it working now. So very high level, our country has the way I see it, three options in the, in the short to medium term. There will be many other candidate vaccines that will come to the fore down the line. But our big issue right now is we've got a timing issue. We've got to vaccinate at very least our healthcare workers and the highly vulnerable populations in, in quarter one. Uh, which ends in March. So we've got three options um, in no particular order. The Pfizer one, it does come with uh, with challenges, cold chain management and logistics supply challenges. You've got the AstraZeneca one and you've got the Johnson & Johnson one. Although Aspen is manufacturing for Johnson & Johnson, it does not determine the allocation of where that product goes. So government are in, in very intense and robust discussions, the way I understand it right now, with all three of those manufacturers. The first two being Pfizer and AstraZeneca could come online in quarter one, provided certain agreement concluded uh, between now and the end of this quarter. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel, albeit uh, um, not one that is uh, very, uh, sort of uh, very illuminating right now, but there is some light that you could land through bilateral agreements some Pfizer and Astra product, the way we understand it. And then there are also significant attempts to reschedule the delivery of some of the COVAX inventory um, that was due to arrive in quarter two. And I understand from the health department, there is um, some, measured, um, some, some measured progress in terms of rescheduling part of that into the end of quarter one. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that business view. We will monitor um, progress made uh, very carefully here at SABC, SABC News for you. That was the chair of the Business for South Africa Health Working Group, Stavros Nikola.